Yeah, hello. I wanted to give you some tips on the APS style formatting, how you can do it easily and quicker, faster, uh, especially if you are coming from maybe other light writing styles like Chicago or Angular, Harvard Angular, MLA, and you just want to have a crash course on APA formatting. The easiest way to do it is using your Microsoft Office. A lot of people don't know that, but it's already embedded in Microsoft Office. In fact, all the writing style, most of the writing, the major writing styles are embedded in the Microsoft Office. Microsoft has done a service, a good service to students for that. So you can take advantage of that. And a lot of students are not actually aware, but I'm going to show you how you can do that and easily. So uh, this is the paper that I wrote for my MBA uh, for my business strategy class in my MBA at Capilla University and um, this was a report it's not true APA because you can see that the format here is the report format because the single space APA requires you to do uh, double space and then the first line is identified like with the identification is 5.5 percent for every uh, first line in the paragraph to indicate a new paragraph there's always uh, 0.5 and I'm going to show you how to do that but this is an APA uh, style uh, page this is you see that these are double space they're centered they want you to have the title your name this college or institution the course or whatever you write right you are writing about the professor by the way shows a great professor and then the date um, but this was based on the sixth edition, and I think API has come up with uh, API is American Psychological Association. They've come up with the seventh edition, but it's not yet updated in, in Microsoft. I still have API uh, sixth edition, so I may want to see what changes are there. One of the changes I know is on the cover page. For regular academic paper like college and university, this is all you do. But if you are doing like a research a journal, uh, a peer reviewed article, there are other things that you have to add on the cover page. So those are some of the changes that they've added. And so you may want to catch up, but I don't think major change, there are major changes. So APA also recommends that for Capella, the cover page, they want them to be in APA format. So this is how you should set up your cover page. It should be one inch margin all around, top, left, right, and bottom. And then it should be centered on the cover page and you should have the running head, should read running head and then the title should be in the running head in caps. But on the following pages, you only have the title in caps, no running head. There's a way to do that. Uh, it may, uh, to, do, to do that, the easiest way to do that is, um, it may not come, but I'll just show you how you do it. Uh, when you open a new page, uh, it's, it may not come up here because I have other things. I have grammar. By the way, if you're a student, you want to have grammar. If you're a Capella student, there is a complimentary uh, subscription that can be using your Capella uh, email that you get a free subscription. It's a complimentary subscription. A great resource. And when you do your paper, I would always run it through grammar. I suspect uh, uh, professors at Capella use that too. By the time I'm submitting my, my paper, the grammar, the, the, the structure, it helps you edit your paper. So what you want to do is to have margins, uh, one inch margin all around. How you do that is go to layout and go to margins and select this one. So you have margins, one inch margin all around. The next, the next tab that you want to go to is the font. You go to the font. Capital recommends times New Roman, regular, and 12. No color or anything should be black. Romans times New Roman, regular, and 12. It also allow, uh, supports and Caribri. Caribri can do regular 11, uh, 11 or 12, whatever is, you whatever you like. I think it also, they also, some professors also uh, allow you to do aerial. You can do that to regular 11 or 12. But I like times uh, New Roman, regular and so on. So what you want to do is to say set as default. Not this document only it means while well, the settings are only going to apply to this document. What you want to do if you're a student, you'll be doing this all the time. You want to go to all documents. So that every, each time you open a uh, Word document, these settings will already be 
it will already be set to the default settings, which are, are, are the fonts, uh, style, uh, font style, uh, size, uh, uh, regular size, uh, font style, type, font style, and type. Then you say OK. All right. So when you say OK, it's it. The next thing you want to go to is go to the home. We've done the layout margin, we've done the fonts, is the paragraph. APA recommends centered on the alignment you want to pick centered. The next tab you want to look at is the special. You want to put first line if you're doing pure APA, but if you're doing a report, you can always come here and adjust this to none. Like for a report I have, I put none. You can see that they are all the text is aligned on the left. If I do uh, first, you see that the first line, which uh, which I, uh, implies a paragraph, is identified by 0.5. And then you want to choose double for like on the cover page I have double, but for a report you see that I had single. So you can easily come back and change this for a particular document and save. Then you also want to say set as default, like I explained. Uh, you do for all documents based on if you do just this document so each time you open a document you have to do it you want to do all documents and then you say okay so and then you want to say okay it will be said so it means each time you open the document the old settings will be the default setting you don't have to do it so I recommend this for students if you're a student you want to do this all the time. How you add the cover page, uh, a page number, you want to go to insert. Then you want to go to header. But it will give you for, <coughs> me, for some of you, it will give you the option to say different first page. So it's not giving me because of uh, the things I have here. I have all these things. that, But there's an option to say a uh, different first page. Yeah, so you want to choose a different first page for it, otherwise it's going to give you problems if you don't because once you do that you want to go to top right, top uh, right and you see that it says one here. Now because I didn't say, I didn't do different first page so this is how you put the header on the but make sure you start from the second page and do different first page otherwise you are going to have problems uh, setting this. So this is not my main uh, discussion today. So what I want to show you is how you I just wanted to give you that as a bonus but uh, what I want to show you is how you come up with this formatting. I didn't do this, the computer did this for me. By the way don't highlight, I did this just for me so that you can easily see what I'm talking about. Uh, this is what I'm going to focus on. This was a report, that's why it's formatted like this. If it was APA, it was going to be, it was going to be uh, like this. APA, it was going to be like this. Centered, first line, and then it was going to be double. You see, you see how it changes? first line and this one. So what you do after you've done that, you want, normally you want them to be left aligned after you've done so, just so that things are, are things are straight. This is pure APA. You see the first line indicates a paragraph and then that one also indicates a paragraph. And it's, 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 it's. so, I'm just demonstrating how you do that in APA. This that is how APA is done, but that's not mine. What I want to show you is how you come up with this, and how you use, uh, and also how you do a reference page. This is how APA because a reference page should be on its own page. Uh, you don't want to put your references immediately after that. No, it goes on its own page. So that's why when you're writing a paper, they tell you that the paper should be uh, 10 pages, excluding the cover page and the reference page, meaning 10 page minus this one, reference page, 
and minus this one. So then you count, you start counting from page two up to this one. You count ten, or if they say five minus it. So you you didn't want to read the instruction. But how do you come up with these references? This is what I want to show you, and uh, this is the tip I want to give you today. And um, how you do that? Let me show you. I have some articles that uh, some sources. You find what you do is when you plan your paper, you find your sources. What sources you are going to use? Find them ahead of time before you start. By you have a topic, you have identified the, the points you want to make. Find the articles, or websites, or books that that of of course Capella wants you to use it. The Harvard Review, Forbes, uh, Washington Journal. They want reliable sources. You just don't go to uh, to Wikipedia or anything. So I've come up with some examples here that I have used in this book. You see, this is a Harvard Business Review. So what you do is you want to see the title. The journal article is, is this is a PDF. A journal article is Harvard Business Review. And the, the title is, this is actually an extraction from the book, is what is strategy? This is the author, Michael E. Porter. And then you want a date when this article was written. And if you can't find a date here, you see the, the option here. You can either hear or you can go down to the copyright. If it's a website, go to the copyright. So this is the date when it was written. That's the information that I need from uh, this article. The next one is uh, this one here. This is an HP, oh, no, no, this is a book. I couldn't come up with a, 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 a copy that I, I demonstrate, but this is how I can demonstrate a book. For a book, you want the title, the author, the publisher, the year, and the city in which the book was uh, was published. So you are looking for the book. It's straightforward. It's the title, which is this one here. The author, which is this one here. The year when the book was published. This one usually is inside the cover page. The first, second, inside the cover on the first page is where you have the copyright information. You have here the year, the publisher, and the city where it was published. And that's all. The, that's for the book. Then I also have. Uh, I also have this one here. This is an internal uh, HP internal journal. Some companies have their own journals, and this is one of the HP. Uh, it's, it's, it's called Innovation Journal. Journal. So I use this from HP. I like HP because I, I once worked for HP, so. I always write, most of my papers were based on HP. It's one of my favorite companies. So this is, I think it's called the Innovation Journal. And so I used this one. So you see, because there's a title, HP Services Strategy, and then these are the authors. You, only, you don't use that. You don't need their titles. You just need their names. So you just pick the names. The year, you want to find the year when it was written. Uh, so you scroll all the way. You see, you can't find, there's no date on top when it was written. So you go all the way to the bottom, somewhere, somewhere. There must be some some information somewhere. You can't find the information. So because this is a journal, you, if you can't find the date, take it, take to, to today's date when you are accessing this document. And the other important thing is you want that link there, to copy that link. That's how what makes uh, my, the, the, the process I'm going to show you easier. So this is an internal journal, I think, or is it a website? Let me see. Then I also have Forbes. This is an electronic uh, newspaper or magazine, Forbes. So you see it's a Forbes. Uh, you have the date here when it was published, 2018. That's the title. You can either say this one, you can either say it's a website or it's a journal. But this is a journal because there's an author and it tells you this is Forbes. Everybody knows Forbes. So that's the title, your electronic journal. That's a, a, that's a journal name. This is the title. That's the date when it was published. That's the author. Then you copy the link. Um, then the other one, oh, this is a website. Now, this is a classic example I want to show you. So, 
Sometimes you go to the website, you have the title here, HP Business Strategy in, challenge, in, the challenging, in a Challenging Market. You have the date when it was uh, published, you have the title, but you don't have the author name here. You scroll all the way to the bottom, there's no author name. The only thing you have is a corporate thing, and then you have the date. So you can either pick that date, or, but of course you have the date on top, but there's no author. So this, this is a classic example. I, I deliberately put this so I can demonstrate something. Then I also have this one here. This is a, actually this is an the other one is a HP website. This is a journal, an internal journal. It says Innovation Journal for uh, for HP. So you see that it has a journal name, a issue number. The date and the title. So you just pick, you say this is the journal uh, name, uh, it's a journal, and that's the journal name. Then you pick the title, the date, author, there is no author. This is a corporate journal, so it's uh, the author is a corporate author. So what, since I've gone through all the, the examples, let me take you now back to the paper, how you enter this. How you do it is you come to where it says home, so it says references. My, you want to expand your, maybe your, your your menu bar will come up like this. Mine is always to have more space on my desktop. So you want to go all the way to where it says references. You want to go on there. On the references, you want to come here. Make sure this is where I was saying that Microsoft, as you see, they have Chicago, they have Harvard, Angular, they have. All of these, these MLA, if you're from MLA, 7th edition, oh, MLA is updated. But what we are using here is APA, 6th edition. Make sure it's 6th edition. The next part that you want to go to is this one that says manage sources. Make sure in the selected 6th edition, you go to manage sources. This window opens up. So this is a master list. This is the current list. Uh, excuse me. The documents on the right are attached to a current document that is open. The documents on the left, which is the master list, are all the documents that I've used on this computer in the past. They get saved. So the other advantage of this is that you don't have to go and look for articles each time. If you have them saved in here, you can delete them if you want, but if you have them here, you can you want to reuse them. They are already there. You don't have to go and search, you just move them. How you copy a document from here to there is just highlight it and say copy, then it's moved from there. Or you can highlight it and say delete and it's deleted from here. It's deleted, so you can delete everything. But when you open, you probably don't have any articles. So you want to enter new ones. What you do is you go to where it says new. And you remember when I pointed to your articles, the journal articles, this one here, innovation journal. This is a journal. So you go here, what type? This is a journal. You go here on the type source, we go to the journal article. You have different section of a book. Uh, a book, section of a book, journal, article in a periodical, conference, uh, website. You have all these sources. So that is a journal article. What is the author's name? So I'll, I bring you back to this one. This is the title. This is the title. All you have to do is copy this. Go back, title. What is the journal name? Innovation journal. You see how easy it is? This is how easy it is. That's a journal type. Paste year. 2016. So you put in 2016. Page numbers, usually for, for journals, you, this one is 
in, in this case, it's just a one page, because this is a one page article. But if it's a PDF, like, uh, did I have a PDF? Like this one, this one will have several pages. So you just put the number of pages that you've used, or if you want, you can put the whole pages. This is three to 16, but you don't use. So if you've used one to three or three to five, in this case, on this one, you just say one. But if you use maybe one, three to five, what you do is three dash five. That's how you do it, depending on the number of the pages. But in this case, on that one, you just used one. Then, but the next thing that you want is to get the link. And I'll show you why you want the link, even if it's a journal, if it's a book. There's no provision for link. You know where it says show all? You want to click there, it opens up all these things. So you go all the way here, you paste the link. For that article, if you have a PDF, they have uh, the document uh, identification number, you can type it in here. Then if it's a website, a date accessed or article, you can put those number here, year accessed, month accessed, that is, it's today's, it, it, this year, 2020, today is uh, 6 October, you put that information there. If there are short titles, publisher for the book, publisher, it's a volume issue. You see this one has an issue number. This one has an issue number. Issue number five. So if you want, you can go and put that in there. Issue number five, it doesn't have the volume. Then it also gives you a tag name for this article. So you go back there, but where is the author? What do you put in the author name? We can't find the author name. Why? Because this is a corporate article. It was written by for the corporate. There's no specific author. In that case, you want to check, you want to check because if this is an HP, you've seen that as a, this is HP on top. And then if you go in the copyright, you see that is HP. So you can, if you want, you can copy this. That's, how, that's, that's what you want to do. And put that in the author. And then say corporate author. Then you say save. You see that is saved here. But you can also edit. If you highlight it, then you say edit. If you want to change something, then you can go back and change something. That's how you enter these sources. Once they are, you've entered all your articles in here, these are entered here and they're entered in the master document. But these here are attached to the document. If you want to add more, you can just highlight and move them. Once you've done that, you're closed. So, how now do you bring them here? Let's, let's take, for example, this one here. I don't know if this one is one of the articles. Yes, yeah, see, Roth grain. Let's, let's, for example, delete this one. And you want to reinsert it. You click where you want to insert the article after you've typed. You click here. Then you go to references. Then you come to, this is in-text citation. So you go to insert citation. Who are we looking for? Lothgren. So all the articles that are attached to this document, even if you send this document to another person, they'll still be there. There she is. All you have to do is click on it. You see where it is? There it is. It's inserted. There it is. Let's find Porter. Let's, let's delete Porter. Suppose we, we delete Porter. Let's go and find Porter. You go to References, Insert. Where is Porter in our, so you scroll all the way. There it is, Porter. So Porter is inserted here. You see here, there is Porter. Let's find 
let's find HP. You see, this is a corporate author, so it only shows HP. It doesn't show an individual's name. Every time after after a, a reference is inserted, a citation is inserted, you need to make sure there's a period. So you go back. HP 2018. This is HP 2016. I'm looking for HP 2018. It's this one here. This one I used the annual report, the SE uh, SEC uh, filings for for HP. It's a good resource for information for these companies because this is a most reliable, a very reliable source. So you see, it's inserted there. Let's just do a couple more so that um, this is North Yanga, whatever how you pronounce it. Uh, let's, let's see and find let's find him and see if we can I can't get to I can't get to do it today. I tell you what. Okay. You go to references, insert. Uh, where is that guy there? It's this guy here. There it is. Let's get HP twenty sixteen. You can recite the same source several times in the paper. It doesn't matter. So you see this one, I recite it again. Oh, I didn't I didn't change the, the font color. I thought I didn't change it. Just, just, change, just change the font color. So references. 2016 HP 2016 so you see it's it's that easy so we've replaced all the ones that I just wanted to show you how you can do it so all you have to do is enter the sources in your computer and you're good to go the other case that I wanted to show you of uh, a corporate or oh, it's not a corporate but the art course uh, that are written by several authors. You see like this one here. This one was written for several authors. So you just say this one, etc., and others. Or, and, and others. This is how you cite it. If there are more than more authors. If there are two, you can just write this one and this one. But this is more than uh, three. So this is how you put this. This one, you put the first author and others. So that is how you, you do the in-text citations. Let's go now to the reference page. What do you do with your reference page? Let me do it on the blank page. How do you do this reference page? Uh, okay, let me do this. So what you do is, it has to be on its separate page. So you type reference page, then you enter, and then you go back after you you put you come to the reference page you want to go back to your home page you want to go back here what you want is to change usually what i do is is to change here you want to put hanging double and if you want you can set them to left center but just so that they are left centered. But normally you say a centered, say centered, then you, you can go back and just do them left center to align them. But you can also do just left centered. And then you can, don't say default, just say okay. So now how you do, let me do it on a separate page just to show you how to insert these. Oh, you see why you don't want to say left centered? It's because of this. That's why you just say 
centered. Okay, you can go back and center this one, and then this one has to be centered. This is a deep. So, uh, how do you insert this? Let me do them on a separate page. So, just to demonstrate how, how you can do that. I just, I'll go on a separate page. Uh, what you want to do is references. References, then enter. So what you do is you want to go to references. I'm doing it on a separate page to show you. Go to references. Remember for in-text we did insert citation. Now we are going to be bureaucracy and you go all the way down. You see they are all here. They are all here. But for this, you don't want to do them individually. But you see, I can't do them on this page because they are already they are already inserted. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the current reference page. I'm going to delete the current reference page, which is this one here. I'm going to delete all these just for demonstration purposes. And what you do after you've typed the reference page, you want to say enter. Or if you want, then you can go back to references. And now you want to come here. Now you see they are all here. But you don't do them individually like the in text citation. You go all the way to where it says insert bibliography and what you do is boom. Look. Microsoft has formatted all the sources that you entered there. No matter what I do, you see that this one is, because this one is centered, you, you highlight minus the word references. This is how you want to do them. You highlight all of them, then you go here and do left. There you go. So this is, you see how it is formatted. All your sources are formatted and inserted. Microsoft Office formatted your documents, your sources. Now imagine if you had to do all this because the identity, the italic, how you, you, everything, you have to do this manually. When I did APA, we didn't have this thing. You had to do this manually. You had to master what, how to type the words to put and. You see this one, and this is only two song authors. You have to know how to do all this, retrieve, type all this manually, but Microsoft does that for you. So this is what I wanted to show you today to demonstrate. Imagine if you had to type this manually, each individual source, you had to format it manually and type it. That's what we did when I took APA. Uh, probably more than 10 years ago in my junior college, I had to type each individual source manually like this and no way I had to, uh, to use italics, well, how to put the volume, issue number, retrieve. But now Microsoft has this embedded in their program. So you have to do this. So just a recap, what we do, how you do it, you go to your menu, go to references, you pick APA, you can pick, if you are doing other, for this purpose, APA 6th edition, I don't know if Microsoft, okay. then you go to manage sources, and then in manage sources, you say where it says new, and then you enter your sources, if you say book, you choose book, so as you see, you just put author, title, year, city, publisher, so that is if it's the title of the book, your name there, if you are the author, the title, my APA formatting, the year 2020, the city, wherever you live, maybe you live in Washington, D.C., the publisher who published your book, uh, Tim McGraw Hill. That's it. For the book, it's straightforward. Then you say, okay. That's how you enter. If it's a website, you scroll. If you are finding, getting your information from the website, you go to the website. Then you put the author. If there's author, if there's no author, just put the website uh, name and then put corporate author, then put the website name. So website name, like I said, if it's uh, HP, the website name is uh, HP 
Then the web the website that's the website name. It's HP. The, the, the name of the web page is the page that you are citing from. HP. Let's say you are citing from About Us. That's why you are going to cite. If you are citing from services, that, that's the name of the web page. If you are citing from products, that's the name of the, the website. If you have so whatever title is on the page that you are citing is what that is your 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 your, your web page name. So for uh, journal articles for journal articles, they are uh, articles in a periodical that's like in the newspaper or magazine that come out periodically, or journal article. So this is how you do it, and so I just wanted to give you uh, this uh, complimentary video for you that I've uh, subscribed to some of my papers so that to just help you. Because you are maybe looking at my paper and maybe I know some most of you know how to do this, but for those that don't know, maybe you're coming from another light writing star and you just want to have a crash course, this is the easiest way to do it. And so, but I may post other videos on pure APA, how you format. But for those of you that are going to Capella, go to the MBA resources and look, they have templates there on their formats, how you have to format different PowerPoints. Uh, reports, uh, proposals, they are all in there. So you can follow those and then just add what the other instructor, look what your instructor is asking for. Because they say APA, but what they say, they say you write in APA. I had trouble because they said APA and then I was like, okay, this is a report. How do I write a report in APA? So when they say APA, what they want is you know, a cover page but the main board, you have to go with the template in the MBA resources. So I, I hope this is helpful or it has helped somebody. Uh, if you are one of those people that have uh, been struggling with APA, this is the easiest way to do it. I, I think uh, this is going to help you. Some instructors, even for the reports, they want them double-spaced. I noticed some, there were some instructors in other classes that didn't mind whether they did single space, but I wanted to be more professional because this is a competence-based course, so I just wanted to do things the right way. And so this is how you do it. I didn't show, different page, papers come with different uh, formatting styles. Some, they have to add appendix. I didn't include this in here, graphs and stuff like that. They are formats, uh, templates in APA, MBA resources. Utilize that. The other thing that I wanted to, to mention is uh, make use of uh, Grammarly. Uh, I have it installed as a desktop version. See how I, when I have the paper open, I have it as an add-on. All I do is Grammarly, it opens up. Then it analyzes my paper. You see, it's analyzing. Then it highlights where I have problems. So when I say HP, it tells you here what is on HP, and it gives you inconsistency. Where I say here, yeah, it says that R instead of which R. You see, it, it suggests. So or if I do this, it changes that automatically. But again, it still suggests there's a problem here. Say it says that. Then it highlights here. And then when when you when you go when you go when when you go in here you see it has options even plagiarism you can turn on plagiarism it's going to tell you how much plagiarism you have in your in your document it's a very helpful resource that that you you want to utilize um, and then you can set this up on the settings you can choose what type of a paper you are writing so all this clarity it it tells you all these things it's a very helpful resource. You know, uh, punctuations. It's, it it checks punctuations. You have you have a complimentary uh, subscription. It's, some of these things that see it says and you're not supposed to use and saver and cloud. Just just it. it all you have to be click. But you also have to be careful. Make sure sometimes it suggests wrong things. What I did is I would edit a paper with the grammar, and then I'll close grammar. And then go to. Uh, I would use the 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 Microsoft uh, uh, editor as well to check to check my documents. Then I'll edit this. You see that 
Microsoft doesn't find many errors. Grammar was highlighting many errors. This only finds one grammar error. Us. And it suggests, so it's not supposed to have a punctuation. It says finished. And then I would go back. Sometimes there is a conflict between grammar and Microsoft. And, and so I'd go back and forth until I make sure that uh, what makes sense. Sometimes you also have to just figure out that, okay, sometimes grammar is good. I've said it to US English, so whatever uh, language you use, since I'm a, it's a US college, I said it to US, and uh, that's the grammar it's using. So that's a very useful resource that you want to install on your computer. There is a desktop plugin that you install on the desktop. Once you subscribe, you can download the desktop plugin and install it. And even a, 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 like a uh, uh, Google Chrome uh, extension. So even on the website, uh, it, it still helps me when I'm online. So this is a very helpful resource. I hope you find this helpful. I'll try to put up some more videos just to give you tips on how to go about it. Uh, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this video.